Hello and welcome back to my Astro Imaging Journey channel. And not well, all the rage lately while I'm still waiting on my uh, mono camera to get repaired is practice some other stuff. We've done some planetary, some moon. And tonight I'm just going to do something I've done before um, stills. And we're going to do a time lapse instead of doing star trails this time though. Uh, we're going to do uh, just a time lapse. And as you can see here in Stellarium, I have up here uh, my T6i, which is the same as my T7i, which I'll be using. Uh, the 18 millimeter F18. And no uh, teleconverter or anything of that nature. And around 11 o'clock. Jupiter should start picking, peeking out from behind the trees here. And what's going to be interesting as we skip forward is the Moon, Jupiter, and Saturn are all going to be right there together. So what I'm hoping to do is a time lapse all the way through. Might not get that long of a duration because that's two hours but irregardless I uh, think I'm only going to be able to get maybe 1800 stills at six seconds per still should be interesting um, might get might get an hour or so out of that um, but I gotta look at my camera again I think I can get 1800 on that card it might be 1300 either way I'm gonna capture as many as I can and uh, we'll, we'll put a time-lapse together once it's all done um, so yeah, we'll be back after the stills are done Obviously, it's going to be dark out and everything, so I won't be filming outside, but we'll see what, what we can get. And depending on how things go, I might switch over at the end. Okay, so unfortunately, I accidentally closed Stellarium. So if I just pop this right here, let me look through a couple of my other lenses. Thirty-five millimeter. Thirty-five millimeter would make for an interesting shot. And a fifty millimeter. Do I have is it an F18? I'm not sure. But a 50 millimeter. I might have to put my nifty 50 on there and see if I can get all three of them in the same frame. That would be awesome. So I uh, will be back in a few uh, video time, actually in a few hours real time, but see you in a little bit. Okay, so I said the next time we'd be back would be when I was doing the editing and uh, I was looking for my Nifty 50 and I just can't find it. Uh, I'm not sure where I put it. So I just wanted to look through my settings again um, on the 18 millimeter, which we already discussed. That's what I'm going to be doing the time lapse on. Uh, according to photo pills, I should be at about uh, nine seconds. I might back that off a little bit uh, simply because the moon might be way overexposed and the way the atmosphere is tonight, assuming the clouds break. Um, might back that off to six seconds, like I said earlier. So, did check my card. I can get 1600. Um, images on a card uh, that's raw images if I went JPEG it'd be a different story but I like working with raw um, so 
I'll have to do a couple test shots. So I'm gonna factor 1500 is gonna be the maximum number of shots I can get. And if we do a quick calculation, um, it's six seconds, that's 10 per minute. So 1500 divided by 10 is 150, which gives me about two and a half hours worth of time for the time lapse. That is pretty spot on for the time that this will be visible before it moves to the other side because we are looking at right around 1145 ish. And if we scroll through, we'll hit the other trees. Well, it looks like around two o'clock. So 215, that's about two and a half hours. So somewhere in the middle, there might be a small break where I zoom in on 35 millimeter. If we go to there, 35. 35 will give me uh, almost double on the field of view here, or half rather. And if I look at photo pills for 35 millimeter, that gives me 4.83 seconds. So I might do a couple shots at that and then go back and finish out the rest of the night. So we'll see. I'll give you an update when we get to it. All right, so here we are. It's the next day. And as you can see here, I have my Moon, Saturn, Jupiter, Triangle, Time Lapse folder. And I've already transferred all the files from the camera. They're all in raw format. Um, I keep all my data. I don't know why. Because um, you never know what you might need in the future. And let's take a look at the initial tests. So this was just me looking at... Uh, various shots and exposures. Um, you know, making sure the framing was right. Um, you know, looking at the back of the camera and, you know, we can see a couple stars in here and then uh, Jupiter's right there. Moon, obviously. Uh, this was 11, 11.30 at night, so, uh, but if, uh, let's see, can I look at the info? Uh, so you can see I was at ISO 800. I probably could have dropped that down to uh, 400, but, you know, I wanted to make sure I picked up stars as well uh, and this was was a six second shot like I said photo pill set to go with nine um, but I knew the moon would be bright and overexposed so I backed it off um, but it was still kind of blowing things out so we went to four seconds and that's where I ended up being at was uh, four seconds. Now, of course, the clouds were in play, but it, you know it did clear up later. And again, these were the test shots. So, uh, if we go back to the folder, you can just see I was playing around, just double checking a few things, making sure my focus was good, and then I covered the lens, did a black. Um, uh, frame and that got me my uh, delimiter which means anything before this frame so you see it's 8643 so anything numbered before that were my initial test shots and then we have our animation files ended up getting 1900 uh, files out of that and 
all at four seconds apiece. So if we scroll down, you saw the moon was uh, a little bit left of center. And here, once it finally starts painting in, uh, this is uh, 9905 or 99. We need to go back up here. Let's find where it transitions because it does roll over. There's where it transitions. That was the, the first shot. And then it goes back to uh, zero zero or zero six two eight and it creates a different folder it just the numbering rolled over but you can see the moon started a little bit left of center and now it's behind these trees back here so i've, I've got almost the full transition and if we open up this one it's going to be hard to tell in this shot but we can see the stars up here and see some faint stars here. Hopefully it shows up in the video. Uh, but Saturn is right there and Jupiter's already behind the trees. So we will uh, hopefully be able to pull uh, some of that out. And then lastly, we've got the final zoom shot. So right at the end, I move the camera so that the uh, trees were just a little bit off. So you can see here, we got the Jupiter, Saturn, the moon, and just, just to the left of the trees. Um, that was about as far as I could move the camera before going uh, further into the tree line on the other side of the yard. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to do something. Now this one obviously is a little bit overexposed. As you can see, I was playing around. This was half a second trying to pick up the stars uh, or Jupiter and Saturn without overexposing the moon. And you can see I did varying uh, exposures so like this one here barely make out Jupiter there's Saturn and that one's gonna look really horrible uh, but that was one two hundredth of a second so um, not looking for any detail on the moon you know um, otherwise I'd be exposing for the moon I'm exposing more for, I was exposing more to get uh, somewhat of a star field so we can just show that transition, that time lapse as this triangle created by the Saturn, Jupiter, and the moon moved across the sky. Just something I wanted to try to do. So, uh, enough long windedness, uh, let's get into it. So, here we are in Lightroom. Uh, one thing I am going to have to do is I'm going to have to rename some of those files. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is go into the library. We're in Lightroom. I'm just going to go over here to library. I'm going to do an import. We're going to navigate to that directory, animation files, and let's see how they came up. Yep, they came up. Okay, so let's see if there's any. No. Sort. Sort by capture time. Oh, there we go. Yep, okay. And they're all checked. So I don't need to rename. 
That's good. So now I'm going to do an import. And it's going to take a little bit. So we will, we'll be back when this completes. All right, that has completed. So we've got 1984 images. So I'm just going to scroll over to about the middle. I want to edit for roughly the middle. Could start at the first frame, edit it, sync the rest. We've gone through that in uh, some of my other uh, Star Trail videos. Uh, but in this particular case, because we're doing a time lapse, I, I look at, I approach this in two different, in one of two different ways. Go to the middle, edit the middle, and then sync from the middle to the right and from the middle to the left. Um, that way the middle portion of your uh, video will be um, where you want it to be. Uh, the other option is to start at the beginning, the very first file, edit that one, and then sync across and, um, you know, because the beginning of the time lapse is what's going to catch everybody's eyes. So you want the beginning to be right, but the focus is the whole time lapse. So I want it to be good in the middle because I've had time lapses where you start in the beginning and then by the end, uh, either due to do or uh, conditions, uh, the end, you know, the exposure changed and it, by, the, by the end, it just didn't look right. So uh, in this particular case, I'm gonna go with the middle approach. So I'm gonna start somewhere around 1000. Let's just go, yeah, we'll, we'll go right at, right at 1000. And we'll develop, we'll go up to the develop tab. And it looks like daylight. I mean, it's a four second exposure at 800 ISO. So it looks almost like daytime. So we're going to first adjust our exposure. Just want to pull it down a little bit. Darken up that sky a little bit. Still maintain uh, Jupiter and all that. But we still, but we do get some stars up here. Want to boost the contrast a bit. And before I go too far come down here since I'm using a DSLR with the lens we're going to enable profile corrections help get rid of some of that vignetting and flatten the field and let's just go to I don't want to go all the way but we'll just go with about that much contrast Want to bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows, bring down the whites, and bring up the black. Eh, let's bring the blacks down a little bit. Add a little texture, a little clarity. Got a little bit of a lens flare there. Don't think I need dehazing. I'll, I'll apply a little bit. Don't like what the vibrance does. Kind of like what the saturation is doing to the color in the clouds, though. So I'm going to 
bring that up a little bit. Just get a little bit of that orange glow in the clouds. Play with my curves a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, just bring these in just a hair. And that should just about do it. Maybe sharpen it a little bit. Not a ton, there's some noise in there. Do some noise reduction. Not a ton. I'll smooth things out a little bit too much. And yeah, I kind of like it. I got some stars up here. Let me see if chromatic aberration will fix a little bit. I'm not seeing too much of a difference, but I'm going to leave it anyways. So actually, I kind of like that. So if we go to the next one over, that's pretty much what we started with. And we brought it to that, so... I like that. So let's, uh, we've got that one selected. We're going to go all the way to the beginning. Uh, hold shift on the, in Windows and click the first one. We're going to go sync. Synchronize. That's going to take a few minutes. So we'll be back when that completes. All right. So that has completed. You can see these frames down here are much darker now. And you can see up here in this little preview how they're looking. Probably a little darker than I wanted, but again, I wanted the focus to be in the center of the time lapse. So now we're going to come back over here to our 1000 mark and we're going to we're just going to click over here to 1001. We're going to go back to 1000. That way none of the first ones are selected. Now we're just going to go to the end. Again. Hold down shift, click on the last one. Now we're going to sync. And we'll be back when this one's completed as well. All right, that has completed. And as you can see, like before, things darkened up a lot. So now what, what I could do is just come over here and let me get, I want to make sure I'm not selected on anything yet. And I'm going to go up to slideshow. One thing I could do, I could select all these, export them as JPEGs. Um, but this is more for a time lapse and uh, Lightroom has the slideshow built in, which we've done before. So we're just going to go into that and I want to zoom to fill the frame. Yeah, I guess so. Let me go over here and select this one. 
Okay, and if we go towards the beginning. All right, that works. Don't want the border, I don't need a shadow. And we're gonna do, see if we got, well, let's do 30 frames per second. No, 24. Uh, 24, because I think that's what Premiere does. Um, but I'll get into that in a minute. So I'm just going to select one. I'm going to highlight all of them. Then I'm going to say export video. And we're going to navigate. Down here, we're going to pop it into this directory, and we're going to say Moon, Saturn, Jupiter, Time Lapse. Video preset will be 1080p, and we'll hit save, and this will take some time so we'll be back when it's complete all right that has completed so let's take a look at the file let's see what it did I've got some stars. Looks like it's a minute long, a no, minute and a half long. Not too bad. And four seconds gives a nice. The clouds don't get washed out too much. There's some good definition in the clouds. Moon's definitely overexposed, but that's all right. Eh, not too bad. Not too bad. So, all right. So this is not done. Now the the one thing I might do is if we go back, yeah, I might pull this into uh, Premiere and just label like Saturn, Jupiter, Moon, and have it follow the transition. And okay, thought I saw an artifact there. Um, yeah, and just follow that transition all the way up. Uh, but other than that, I think I think that's done for now. If I do that, I'll put it here at the end of the video. But I think for now, that's uh, going to be it. So I do want to say um, apologies for uh, the last couple of weeks being a little bit, a uh, little bit. Uh, absent on the channel here uh it's been a heck of a couple of weeks uh you know normally i like to try to try to do a little bit of editing uh during my lunch hours but you know we got a new lunch uh that happened this past weekend so it was all hands on deck and of course the dogs are barking we got the uh, stepdaughter and her family are now staying with us while they're trying to close on a house so we got the grandkids here and everything else so it's uh been a little chaotic but a chaotic in a good way so we'll uh 
we'll get this back on track here shortly but as you can see here let me pull that up and you can see I've got 11 11 episodes here in the can so to speak I just need to actually get them updated or uh, edited and posted and as you can see one we're working on right now is supposed to be 162 but I'm gonna move that one up and I'm also gonna move these up in front of our processing videos uh, just just simply because uh, that's all the rage and we do have opposition coming up here in a week or so uh, for Jupiter and so we'll, we'll see what happens and as you can hear in the background one of the grandkids is not in a good mood so uh, let me get done with this and uh, yeah so thanks everybody for watching hope you enjoyed it uh, as always clear skies have a good one thanks for watching yet another episode from the after Ninja journey channel really appreciate your viewership in our upper right we have the latest video that I have posted prior to this one down in the lower right we have what YouTube thinks you will enjoy below is a subscription link please hit that like button subscribe if you so choose Ring that bell if you want to get notified of something new. And as always, thank you, Clear Skies. Remember, dude.